Hello, so, um, no, yesterday, tricky day, um, I think Sunday and yesterday were the two hardest days I've had so far, um, as far as, like, my mood goes, but, um, I'm feeling a lot better now, I actually got a bit more sleep last night, still not great, I only got about four hours, but, um, <clears throat> the itching sensation in my leg is now no longer itching, it's burning. Um, I woke up this morning with a really, really tight hamstring. Um, so, lots of stuff happening. I'm f hoping that the burning is just a sign that the nerve is trying to, trying to work. Um, so, fingers crossed, obviously he's got a nerve appointment today. Um... But yeah, that's two two days that were the worst days I've had so far, which I think they were going to come at some point. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, trying to get through them. And luckily I woke up today feeling all right. Um, quite nervous for the nerve appointment, but we'll see how it goes. Um, legs been quite sore today. Uh, but you know, it's the first day I've had properly like actual pain from it. Anyway, um, so yeah, I've got my godmother here, um, staying with us at the moment. She's doing a course in in London, so that's cool. Um, I think I'm gonna write the. Six Nations analysis stuff. Um, tonight, uh, which will be cool after I've seen my surgeon. Physio tomorrow. Um, yeah. Pretty chilled out today. Um, ooh. Oh, that's something else. I've, we've found a... Um, a foot brace so this thing I sleep with it on at night um, although last night I had to take it off because I woke up and it was hurting um, and then I've also got a foot brace that I can wear while I'm like walking around and stuff so um, yeah but positive to keep my foot up good foot f dorsiflexion at the moment um, considering where I am. Something that has slacked off a little bit is doing my passive knee bending. So my range of um, bending my knee has, has gotten less. So I need to start picking that up again. Um, I'm doing my exercises. Hopefully got Marek coming down again on the weekend to watch the rugby. Um... I might even start a book, and for those of you who, oh, I've already started that book. Um, so, for those of you who know me, probably know that I'm not, I might not finish the book because I just have such a poor attention span and reading speed. It's just really hard. So, but it's just something to keep me occupied. Um, yeah started doing a bit of presentation for this mental health talk um, at my old school which is going to be good um, and actually maybe I should explain a little bit more about that so um, basically what the plan is is for me to go back to my old school um, I did this last year and give them a talk about um, what it's like going from secondary school or going from from a year out to, to university and uh, kind of the pressures that brings. Um, when I was at secondary school I suffered really badly with um, like serious anxiety that caused um, some pretty like pretty severe depression um, and um, luckily I've been coping with it. I, I was really lucky in that my parents were very understanding and they kind of afforded me 
um, a private psychiatrist that I could go and see um, and that helped massively I was I'm on kind of medications for for anxiety um, I was I wasn't sleeping properly I've never really slept properly I've always kind of had kind of mild insomnia so um, I never really slept properly and that obviously had a massive effect on on my mental health um, and basically what the plan is is to, for me to kind of use my experience um, to try and see if I can help people who who are at risk of going through the same thing so um, I put a lot of pressure on my first year at uni um, or oh, there was a lot of expectation around my first year of uni I wasn't actually sure I wanted to go to university but everyone's always told that you have to go to university if you want a good job if you want to actually in, do a job you you enjoy you have to go to university you have to do a specific course um, I took a year out after I left secondary school because I had no idea what I wanted to do um, and I ended up choosing uh, a BSc in sports coaching and went to Southampton Solent University uh, and um, I think Part of the part of the issue was looking back on it now was was maybe the introduction to the course and the introduc introduction to to uni life. It was a bit of a strange tactic that they used at the university, which was basically to tell us that we were all lazy, um, and they thought none of us were going to do any work. Um, I think it was basically trying to trying to use a scare tactic into getting us to take it seriously, especially in first year. I think a lot of people don't take it seriously. Um, but that kind of started things off. Um, and I didn't really enjoy first year. There was a lot... I, I probably should have been a bit more wise about the course I chose because... Uh, I really struggled to keep up with some of the science stuff because I didn't do A levels that were related to the subject, whereas everyone else had done like PEA level or biology and, and were kind of up to date with that. Um, and I struggled, and I was in small halls, only three per flat. You know, I had two or three really close mates um, who I'd go out with, but no one else really. And it, uh, I was very lonely for the first for the first year and it had a massive effect on my mental health and I started going down that kind of depression road again um, and I had some pretty pretty dark moments where I just I wasn't handling it and it was it was really getting the best of me um, but yet again parents come to the rescue um, psychiatrists come to the rescue and and um, Basically, I think part of the issue is is I've never been very good in the education system anyway because I think a lot of people try and use ADD as an excuse, but it, some it really is a struggle. Um, I've always had it, um, and it just meant that I could never get pieces of work done, and I'd just beat myself up about it. I'd get really angry at myself, not get the work done, then I'd get you know yelled at or in trouble for not doing the work, and then you know you should have done the work and and you sit there and you sit there for an hour, an hour two hours and you've written one line or just the title um, trying to get this stuff done and it's really mentally frustrating and um, going to uni from secondary school probably for me was a bit of a self-destruct move as far as academic go, academics go um, but I was really lucky in that I found um, this thing called the England Rugby Mentorship Scheme um, that I, w I luckily got accepted on um, where basically they take young coaches through and, and give them qualifications and, and, and get us coaching um, lots of people which has led to the job that I'm doing now um, and to be honest with you that's the only reason I've stayed at university um, I would have left halfway through first year if if I hadn't had that job, to be honest with you, 
Um, I really wasn't enjoying it. Um, and I just think uh, there's a lot of people who go to university not necessarily for the right reasons. And I think if you're spending nine grand a year, or whatever it is, um, you you need to um, be sure that it's what you want to do. I think a lot of people are going into like generic degrees now and not and are just getting a degree for the sake of getting a degree and then putting loads of pressure on their first year and when it doesn't turn out the way you think it's going to turn out it can have a pretty um, devastating effect on on your mentality throughout uni. And university can be a really lonely place, um, especially if you feel like you don't fit in anywhere, which has always been my issue, my anxiety, my social anxiety has always been off the off the charts, which well basically didn't believe I, you know, I really um, was fitting in anywhere. Luckily in second year, um, things got a bit better, still couldn't get any work done, but um, I met a new group of friends. Um, I made some mistakes in my coaching life which I ha had to learn from pretty quickly but really happy that I did learn from them and kind of moved on and really helped me helped me with that um, and basically so that like the aim I've been through a, like a lot when it comes to school and university and, and my aim is to try and not put people off going to uni because I still think university is a really great great thing to be able to do, but to kind of show people that they shouldn't be afraid to wait, um, or if they don't want to wait, just not putting so much pressure on how good it's going to be. I think you're told a lot that university is going to be the best years of your life, and and it has to be the best years of your life. People don't take it seriously when you say you're not having a good time at uni. They're like, well, you're at uni. If you're not having a good time at uni, you're definitely not going to have a good time out of uni. And I think people need to start realising that um, university is a place where where mental illness can really hit you hard. Um, and so people um, need to start realising that, that there are people really suffering out there who are who are being kind of like we're always led to believe that university is the best thing to do um, but it's very individual it's very kind of subjective um, I, I mean we've I had a story about the headmaster at my school which I thought was really good which was um, there was an open day and people were doing tours and stuff at the school um, and the parent in question asked the headmaster what percentage of kids from the school went to university and um, the headmaster said I think you're asking the wrong question I think you need to ask whether it's going to be right for your kid to go to university um, not whether you, you know not not when they're going to go to university or or where it needs to be a question that's really raised is that is, is university the right thing for you um and I just want to, uh, like, giving uh, a kind of roundup of my experiences and, and how the school helped me and stuff and trying to highlight some of the help systems that you have at the school, um, which we were very lucky again with. Um, I just think it could help some people with who might be struggling to decide whether they want to go to uni or have like feel like they're being forced to go to uni and and maybe don't necessarily feel it's right to say no when they should be able to say no if they want to um you know at the end of the day i think it's very like i said it's very subjective you either um you either want to go or you don't and if you don't want to go you shouldn't be made to you shouldn't be made to do that stuff I mean I haven't really used my degree at all since I started my job 
it's a bit ironic that I got the job at uni um, and the degree has the degree has done nothing for me but the job that I had at uni has done so much more um, and I definitely focused more on the job than I did on my degree um, which lots of people argue with the mistake but I think it's the thing that got me the job that I'm in now um, with England Rugby so um, again I think people are very quick to uh, to play the uni card oh he's a graduate or oh, he's been to uni obviously had like life experiences but what is more life experience than doing like an apprenticeship where you have to actually work in the real world um, and you're not in that bubble I think going from school to doing a year out which is what I did and doing a year in just working I did construction for about five or six months and then I went and worked in a pub for five or six months doing that really was really good for me because it opened my eyes to what what it is like actually working in the real world and like the construction job I had was a zero hours contract so crap hours um, not getting paid for travel but having to travel really long distances um, but also you know hard hard graft really having to you know you're doing 13 14 hour shifts um, really really hard graft and I think it really put in perspective um, what hard work is um, and I think it's very easy to get caught up in the uni bubble because when I went back to uni I was just my whole thing was why am I paying to be miserable which is what I was I was paying money to be to not enjoy myself which which makes no sense to me at all um, but it was something I was told I needed to do um, and again I think when you're younger because obviously my parents paid for my education and you always talk about how much you hated school and then you look back and actually realise how much you liked it but I'm now old enough to decide when I want to do something and I look back at uni not, not that I didn't enjoy any of it but the bit that I was paying for I definitely didn't enjoy the bit that I paid the most amount of money for I, I hated I absolutely despised it um, the thought of going to uni every day killed me the only thing that kept me there was thinking about my coaching and then some of the people that I met as well um, so I think me going and doing this talk should be something that could help um, but it might not but like, I did one last year and I kind of winged it well, I'm prepared a bit more this year, but um, but yeah, hopefully I can I can be a bit of help to someone, um, even if it's one person. I feel like I will have done something right. So um, yeah, it's just uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm trying to sort stuff out for that um, and try and get a date sorted. Hopefully in kind of March or sometime where I can actually walk. Um, yeah. So, that's what I've been planning. Um, and then there's some other stuff that I can't talk about um, because it's not officially there yet. Um, which is, again, to do with the same kind of stuff, but more specific about at uni. Um, but mental health is becoming a topic that's more talked about, but I think there's still a taboo around it and... Um, I've never been scared to talk about it because my parents have always encouraged me to talk about it um, since I was young. So um, I, uh, I've always been pretty open about the issues that I've had. Um, and again, that's why I'm not afraid to put it on camera and stuff. Because why would you be? It's, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with having a mental illness. Um, as far as I'm concerned so um, that's that's my point of view my point of view is that you know not enough people are, can afford help and stuff and so hopefully by doing talks like this might be able to help people even in the tiniest way that's, that's kind of the aim it's, even if it's a little bit of help um, sometimes a little bit is all you need 
So, yeah. Looking forward to getting those done and doing those. Um, I'll probably get very nervous towards the time when they come about, but it's all worth it if if um, if people find it useful. So, yeah. Gone on a bit there. Jesus, 20 minutes. Probably going to have to cut this down in the edit, edit but, you know. Okay, well, yeah, I'm going to go off to the nerve appointment in a minute, so I will update you tomorrow.